Biobalance HealthCast episode 217, Testosterone Replacement Case Study, Libby's Story. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. This week, Dr. Moffin and I are going to be talking about something, why we believe in the things that we believe. Mm-hmm. We believe that testosterone pellets can change your life for the better. Mm-hmm. And that's still a somewhat new concept or controversial concept. And so one of the ways that we think it would be beneficial to discuss it is to present for your hearing actual testimonials of actual patients talking about what brought them to Dr. Moppin's office, what they were experiencing in their life, uh, how the treatment decision was made, how that impacted them, how they benefited or felt that they didn't from whatever it was that Mm -hmm. they had to say. So we're going to be presenting these testimonials interspersed in the commentary that that we are doing. We're going to focus on five elements in this presentation. We're going to focus on what brings people to Dr. Maupin's office in particular. We're going to focus on the symptoms that they were experiencing. Uh, We will share with you, it'll be posted visually for you to see, the list of uh, symptoms for TDS, testosterone deficiency syndrome, that are presented in our book, The Secret Female Hormone, which is discussing the book is discussing the whole concept of uh, hormone replacement and testosterone replacement of various kinds and which ones are better and why and, and how you make distinctions among them. So all that information is in the book, but the, the list of checklist of symptoms that you might be experiencing in your life are the checklist of symptoms that these people will present in their testimonials. I mean, their real life experience. Mm-hmm. So, so you can see that. You can get your own copy of the book and look and see if any of that is relevant to you. So I, I have asked my patients to do this because mm-hmm. so many people say, I'd like to tell you about my experience, right. or I think that if my friend heard about everybody's experiences, then they would believe enough to come in and get better because women really, really want their friends to be as good as they are. They don't want to mm-hmm. get become younger and have their friends get older on them. So, <laughs> so, um, so what we're going to talk about why we did this, which was, it's much better to hear from real people, how they got better. You've heard from me, you've heard from Brett that we are much better and that our lives have changed, but to hear from somebody who's uninvolved in our business and who is a patient might help you find those same symptoms in yourself you might identify with their worries or their fears and how they and how they overcame them so we're going to talk about the symptoms of testosterone deficiency through our patients and and we're showing the patients and and they have graciously given us permission to do this because they have become believers too you know there's always the possibility that as long as we're just talking about our experience you know that people will think we're blinded by the light well Uh, that we're just doing another ad where everybody says oh it changed your selling. life, yes. which is so sad when something really does change your life. Right. When something actually doesn't just like make your feet smell better or, I mean, seriously, I mean, yeah. that changed my life. My feet right. smell better. I mean, that's something that's significant. That's what advertisements do. Right. And that's why I'm not at all enthused with that kind of advertising because everybody thinks it's a lie. Well, these are true, real people who were in my office and we said, come on in, let's see your, let's hear your story. Would you like to tell it to us? And so as you listen to this, there there will be uh, distinct elements that we want you to notice as we go through, and we'll touch them again uh, in summary at the end. We want you to listen to the patients talk about their discovery of their symptoms, the reality of the way that their life was changing, and then what they did about it and how it changed after they did something about it. We'll talk about the importance of relationships. Over and over again, you will hear these people say, the relationship that I have with Dr. Maupin and her staff matters to me and for these reasons and so listen to what they say about that the process of recovery how quickly did they change and get better how quickly did the symptoms go away how long did the symptoms stay away what happens if you decide you know what this isn't helping me and you come off the pellets Mm -hmm. uh is it reversible will i get this stuff back will it go away and then finally the question of cost uh, which everybody has in their mind when they when they evaluate is this something that I can afford to do or should do do I, do I commit my resources to this treatment 
and what would be the payoff for that. Uh, so, so today we're going to listen to uh, Libby and Kent, her husband, mm -hmm. and they're going to talk about their relationship and ha how it floundered when, when they, um, when Libby lost her testosterone and lost her hormones altogether, and after uh, she got them back. What a, a great change happened in their relationship from both of them. I heard about Biobalance for Women from six of my girlfriends who had been seeing Dr. Maupin in the past. And when I just started describing what was going on with me, they all said, you should go see Dr. Maupin. So I did. I've been a patient since I was 45. So that's... Yeah, almost five years, and I think historically going through menopause at 45 sounds like it's early, but for me it was not a slow transition. It was like I was, I fell off a cliff. Everything in my life just came to a screeching halt. When I first noticed the symptoms, I was in California visiting family, and I was taking a shower, and I looked down, and I don't know what happened, but it was like overnight my body was like, possessed by aliens. It seemed like my breasts were five times bigger and I, I mean just everything about how I felt and how I looked just seemed completely foreign. And I walked out of the bathroom and I said to my husband, either we're having a baby or something is definitely wrong with me. And he went, well, okay, I can see that. So that was kind of the first physical indication, not necessarily the emotional indication that something was going on. I didn't have hot flashes like some people do. I had panic attacks. And so I'd be sitting there on the couch and all of a sudden I'd feel my heart start to race and I just, like I was short of breath and I couldn't figure out what was creating this response. When I'm sitting there watch, you know, watching, emotionally I'd be out for a walk on a beautiful day and some song would come onto my headphones and I would be bawling within five minutes and I'd be thinking to myself, why am I feeling this way when this is something that I get so much pleasure out of and I'm so happy to be outside and, and yet I'm an emotional wreck. And then in regard to my libido, which is huge for me, I was not particularly interested in sex and I'm not like a sexual animal, but I am very affectionate and I enjoy having sex with my partner and so I was like well that's weird and that's way wrong because it was missing a huge component of his and mine relationship and that felt disconnected like I was disconnecting from him and seemingly the rest of the world and I didn't know I felt like I was falling off that cliff and kind of scrambling to get back to where I was. As you can see from what Libby had to say her awareness of symptoms was intruding and exploding into her life. But for those of you who have a chance to, to look at the material that we'll put on screen, uh, or go to our book, The Secret Female Hormone, and look at the list of symptoms for people who are suffering from TDS, what we call testosterone deficiency syndrome, then you can compare that list to what Libby experienced, you compare it to what you experienced, and see how desperate she began to feel. Uh, and so she and her husband recognized something is wrong, and so they began to search for an answer. And their presentation, you can't say, oh, that's not exactly like mine. Yeah. But if there are enough symptoms that are like hers, right. and you feel like this is you. Yeah, not everybody has all the symptoms. No, and not everyone, ha yeah, not all of them, and not in the same, they don't feel them the same way. Not everyone has anxiety attacks. and. A lot of people do. Right. Or, and or you that's may a have kind of unusual symptom. Parts that you think, well, I can live with that. That's not so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and actually, a lot of women initially say about the loss of sex drive. <laughs> you know, I was so busy, I didn't have time for that anyway. And so it, it was somewhat of a relief not to have to worry about it. I got it. to sleep five minutes more. And then, <laughs> then later, they're like, oh, wait, that was a bigger deal than I thought it was. Because uh, their husbands think it's a big deal. Yeah. And and, and 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 they need to attend to that. And then and it takes a little while for us to get past all of the um, clutter in our lives to go. Oh, I really miss that. I, I'm. Why yes. am I not like missing it more? I miss it, but I don't really feel that desire. Right. So I always say it's kind of like having. Um, 
no appetite. And so, not many people have had no appetite. <laughs> <laughs> but when you have no appetite, you're just not hungry for any kind of food that's put in front of you. And that's and that's to me, that's sometimes what no sex drive symptoms of depression is is described as. So. That's exactly right. So so let's listen to Libby talk about how once she understood there was something wrong, how she began her journey to find you and what that was like for her. I would say, so that was in January, and then I think the first time I saw Dr. Maupin was in April or May. So it was a good five months. It was five, five months of hell, basically. And I was just so depressed, despondent, what's going on? Is this how I'm going to be for the rest of my life? If it is, I'm not sure I want to keep, you know, just horrible things going through my head. And it was just unbearable for me. Funny story about getting there, since we live in Kansas City and my husband travels extensively overseas, literally he got home I think on a Wednesday and I said, oh by the way, we're driving to St. Louis tomorrow. And he went, we are? I said, yeah, I've, I've got to go see this doctor. I've got to figure out what's wrong with me. So we got in the car, he describes it, first three hours are complete silence. And then I looked over at him and I said, just tell me I'm not going crazy and burst into tears. And he said, honey, whatever it is, we'll get it figured out. Don't worry. I'm sure it's not you. Meanwhile, this poor man who's completely jet lagged and whatever, and I'm making him drive because I'm such a wreck. How great is that? But he's a trooper, so we made it, obviously. Saw Dr. Maupin, and when I sat down with her, with, with my husband, and we went over how I felt versus this is your blood work and how you should feel, that was miraculous for me. Nobody has ever taken the time to actually sit down with me and say, how do you feel? Listen to what I say and then say to me, you know what, that's okay. We're gonna help you feel better right now, which of course brought me again into tears because you're an emotional wreck at the time. But I was so blessed for that whole hour with her. Every time I refer her to doc other people to Dr. Mop and I'm like, and she's going to sit with you for an hour and talk to you about how you feel. And so it's all about how you feel. Don't worry if you're thinking, oh, my blood work won't be the right thing. Don't worry about it. She's going to treat your symptoms and make you feel better. I have a background in science. So when she went over those numbers, she's like, well, actually, you have a reason for feeling the way you do. Your testosterone level is at zero, which for someone who's really active like you are is horrific. And I went, oh, thank goodness. It, it isn't all in my head. It's actually physiological, which made me, of course, burst into tears again. <laughs> you can see how painful that drive to St. Louis was. Once she had made the decision, <laughs> I need to go and find this doctor and see if she can help me because I still feel crazy. Mm -hmm. She'd had five horrible months of of knowing that something was out of whack and not knowing that there was really something that could be done. And, and I've actually been on those long car rides with nobody talking and then tears. Uh, they are ungodly painful. See, you're looking at it from the man's point of view, and I'm looking at it from Libby's point of view, and I'm thinking to sit there, and in your head you're thinking, I have to tell him I think I'm crazy. I think I, I have to tell him that I think there's something wrong with me I can't fix. I have to tell him, and it might ruin my whole life because... If I'm crazy, he's not going to love me anymore. So I can't talk I, about it. So that's from the that. woman's perspective. Yeah. She's silent because she doesn't want to utter it. It may be something she can't take back. Right. Once and you so, say it, you can't unsay it. And and that's very common yeah. in, in the patients that have come to see me. They say, I, I wouldn't tell my husband I thought I was crazy because I thought he might lock me up. He might call a psychiatrist. I might be locked up in a hospital. Right. And and, and then, then when they find out there's something really wrong with them yeah. and that they can be fixed and it can be helped, well, they start crying. They're so happy. And, and you could hear the joy and the enthusiasm in her voice when she talked about the, the reality that you spent time with her and you listened to her and you explained the science, which she had some foundation in, in a way that made her feel like there really is a real thing it's biological, it's physical, mm -hmm. it's not emotional, mental, and I'm not crazy. Right. So she reflects what so many other people say about the importance of attending and time and relationship that mm -hmm. they experience in your office when they come. 
and I and I'm glad of that. That's what that's, that's what, what I've you crafted. Set up. That's what you that's, train your people to do. I've cra I've crafted this practice the way I've always wanted to practice. Right. I've always wanted to have a lot of time with each patient, and I've always wanted to have be able to understand what they're going through and try to help them through that in whatever way I can. But but this practice, not just a GYN practice, but this practice where I'm actually providing them with something that very few people provide them with. I can give them time and I can give them the most effective hormonal treatment I've ever experienced. Right. And that's amazing. It's amazing to be a doctor and have an amazing treatment and something that works and you can be confident saying you're going to be better and then also be able to spend the time explaining it to patients. So, so the next question is then beyond paying attention to them, listening to them, looking at their lab work, What's the magic? How do you do what you do? How does the patient experience that? And when can they expect to notice change and what kind of changes? So let's see what happens with Libby. Okay. When I first had my pellets put in, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I was, of course, apprehensive. Anytime anybody comes at me with a needle, it always makes me anxious. Call me crazy. So the first time, I think I was super tense. And I would have to say that since then, because I know what to expect, I know that if I say, hey, I can still feel that, that they're going to back up and take the time to make sure that everything is numb. You don't get that kind of service in a lot of physicians' offices. They're not really looking for feedback. They just want you in and out quickly. But every time I've seen both Susie and Lori, I feel like it's going and sitting down and talking with one of my girlfriends. How are you? What's going on? How do you feel? What can we do to help? all that kind of stuff and it it makes it's great to come here because I feel like I get to see my friends which is not an experience I don't see any other physician ever because I don't really like doctors <laughs> but Dr. Moppin I love initially the first day I didn't really notice anything interestingly I called my mom after a couple days and she said did you did you go see that doctor? Did you get those pellets? And I said, yeah. And she goes, you know what? I hear a difference in your voice. And I went, that's crazy. Well, you know, you hear your own voice all the time. I'm thinking, my mother's nuts. Forget it. And she goes, no, really. And then my husband came in and he said, you know, your face is a lot more relaxed. And I thought, maybe I am starting to feel a little bit. But for me, it was about two weeks. At that two-week mark, I noticed... I had more energy. I was sleeping better. That racing heart thing had gone. I was interested in being into it, intimate with my husband. I was like on top of the world. I felt so much better and I felt like me. So that was interesting about her anxieties, about being treated, about needles and knives and what the <laughs> process was going to be like. And then also to sit there and wonder, okay, what's going to happen to me and how long will it take before I know anything different? Mm -hmm. And will this really work? I mean, is this just a magical puffery or does it, does it work? And so it's going to be interesting to hear what her experience was like, what her feedback to her girlfriends were like, who had been proselytizing this to her when she mm -hmm. thought she was crazy. Uh, and how her husband began to, to notice. I mean, she, she says a lot of things that I find to be my own personal experience reflective of the way it works mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. and the way it works for my wife and the way it works for the people that I encounter and know mm -hmm. through your office who are constantly saying these things. So let, let's listen to what she has to say about once the treatment occurred, when did she know it? What did you know and when did you know it? Right, right. Uh, so how did her life change? I would definitely say I got my life back and I got me back. With my pellets, I'm exceedingly more calm and emotionally more stable. When I feel like my pellets aren't, are wearing off or they're not there, like when it first started happening, I was an emotional wreck. And I think men, especially, always look to try to fix whatever's wrong. And my husband couldn't fix what was wrong and I think for him, not only was he worried, where did my wife go? But I think he was frustrated that he couldn't make it better for me. So luckily, he's very familiar with Dr. Mop and he, he comes with me to any procedure when he's not traveling. He's visited Dr. Moppin for himself and talked to her. He's 62 and talked to her about, you know, where am I? Am I okay? 
because I want to, I feel good and I want to keep feeling that way. And so whenever we're in the car or a few days before, and he knows when I'm not feeling myself, I'm tired, I'm not as witty as I normally am. And he said, you know, honey, it's just a few more days. And he puts his arms around me and he hugs me and he says, we're going to make it better. And I think for him, it's a huge relief to know that he's got this group of people that are helping him help his wife. We are going to continue next time with discussions about how Libby and her girlfriends then talk to one another about her experiences and how she proselytizes or recruits new patients for me <laughs> and because of how good she looks, how good she feels, she has to tell everybody. But more than that, we'd like to to give you a, a, a view of her husband's viewpoint about how Libby's, how Libby's changed or how Libby's back to normal and how their dynamic changed, how their love changed. And we're going to talk about that next time. So see you then. It's an awesome story and he articulates it so well uh, in, in such a sensitive, supportive, compassionate, loving way that I want everybody to hear it. So please come back next week and listen to that. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.